Welcome to Math with GCSE Mathematics Zone. In this video, we're going to look at the August 2023 Mathematics Paper 1. So if you are planning to write an exam in 2024, this is the best time to start preparing for your exam. So make sure that you watch this video until the end as I reveal the deep secrets and tricks on how to answer uh, Paper 1 Math questions. Alright, so the first question says evaluate. So when they say evaluate, they want you to work out and find the actual value. So let's just write this uh, expression. So we have 3 squared plus 3 to the negative 1 times 2 to the 0. Alright, before you start answering the question, any question you need to understand the method that you are going to use to attack it. So in this case, uh, this is an expression, a numerical expression. So meaning we are going to follow the order of, of operation by following bid mass. All right. So do we have brackets? No. Do we have indices? Indices. Yes. Which are, which are also called the powers. So you can see that we have the powers or the indices. So we are going to work out the powers first. So 3 squared is same as 3 times 3 then plus 3 to the negative 1 by the laws of indices if you have the base a which is any number a that has been raised to the power negative b it means that this is going to be equal to 1 over a to the power b all right but now in our case the ba our base is 3 so meaning this can be written in this form so we are going to have 1 over the base 3 to the power 1, which is just 3. Then times uh, 2 to the power 0 is just 1. Any number to the power 0 is 1. All right. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 over 3 times uh, 1 is just 1 over 3. All right, so this is a fraction and this is uh, a whole number. So you need to know that this can be written as a fraction as well by saying over 1. So you need to know that fractions can only be added if you have the same denominator. Can only be added directly if you have the same denominators. So the common denominator here is a 3. So meaning we need to make this denominator to be 3. We're going to do that by multiplying by 3. All right. So what we've done on the denominator here, we also do it on the numerator so that the value of the fraction remains the same. All right. So 3 times 9 is 27 over 3 times 1 is just 3 plus 1 over 3. So now, because the denominators are the same, it means now that the two fractions, these two fractions can be added directly. So we're going to keep the denominator 3, 1. We're going to keep the denominator 3. Then 27 plus 1 is 28. Okay. Um, 28 divided by 3 is 9. Remainder 1 over 3. So this is the answer. The next question says simplify. To simplify means something is looking big. You need to make it look simple. You need to reduce it. So um, when you look at this question, it has brackets. So the first step that you're going to do is to open the brackets or to expand by multiplying uh, each term that is outside the brackets by everything that is in the brackets. So we're going to say uh, 2 times x is 2x, then 2 times uh, positive 3y is positive 6y. So take note, I'm saying 2 times positive 3y. I'm multiplying together with a sign to avoid mistakes. So we are done opening this. Then we, we, we come to this. Negative 3 times 4x is negative 12x. Negative 3 times negative 2 
is positive 6. All right. At this stage, you collect like terms together, those with x's. So this one has x. Uh, this one has x. Uh, so take note, I'm collecting together with their signs. All right. So what you are ha having now is 2x minus 12x is negative 10x. Okay? Then do we have any terms that are like? No. So meaning this term and this term are going to be written as they are. So plus 6y plus uh, 6. So this is the answer. All right, question three says factorize completely. So take note, there are two uh, statements here. You need to factorize and you need to complete the factorization, okay? So you have 3x squared minus 27. Okay, so the first step that you are supposed to do here when they say factorize, uh, you need to look for the highest common factor or what is common between these two terms and in this case a 3 is common so we're going to factor it out like this uh, so 3x squared divided by 3 will remain with x squared in the brackets then negative 27 divided by 3 will have negative 9 here all right so we are having 3 then x squared minus 9 can be written as 3 squared Okay, now, when you look at what is in the brackets here, you can see that x squared is a square number and uh, 3 squared is also a square number. And because these you have two square numbers and in between you have a, a, a minus sign, it means that the expression that is in the brackets is, is in the form of dots okay difference of two squares okay so difference of two squares states that if you have a square number a that is subtracting another square number b then for you to factorize this uh, you are going to factorize it in this form okay you're going to factorize it as follows you put a plus here and a minus there so you say the square root of a squared is a you also write it here. Uh, the square root of b squared is b. You also write it here. All right. So now, uh, when you look at this, this is exactly in this form. So meaning we're going to have three uh, open brackets, then plus, minus. Okay. The square root of x squared is x also write it here the square root of 3 squared is 3 you also write it here okay so this is the answer 3 x plus 3 x minus 3 all right number four says find the gradient of a line which passes through the points negative 3 comma negative 1 and 0 comma 3 all right, so they want you to find the gradient and the, the, uh, of, the, of the line that is passing through these two points. So gradient is given by the letter M, and its formula is gradient M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. All right, so, but when you look at these two points, uh, you don't have these x1s, y1s, you don't have them. So what you do is uh, you choose each of, you choose any of these points to be point 0.1. So I'll choose this one to be point 0.1. If this is point 0.1, then it means that here you have x1, then this is y1. Then this will be x2 and y2. So maybe this is point 0.2. All right, now we can replace uh, these values in the formula. So we are going to have y2 is uh, 3, okay, 3 minus uh, y1 is minus 1. So put in brackets like this, please. 
Many students make mistakes here. Put in brackets here. If you have a negative, you are subtracting a negative, you make sure that you put it in brackets like this. Then divided by x2. Uh, x2 is 0. So you have 0 minus x1 is z minus 3, negative 3. So put in brackets like this, guys. Okay? So you have 3. So first of all, you are going to say negative times negative, you have positive. So you have 3 plus 1 over uh, zero, uh, then negative, negative. So here you are going to have 0 plus 3. All right? So 3 plus 1 is, is 4 over uh, 0 plus 3 is 3. So this is the gradient. All right? So this is the gradient. 4 over 3. All right, so I'm leaving it, the, uh, I'm leaving the gradient to be 4 over 3 because it means that I'm moving 4 squares in the y axis and 3 squares in the x axis. Okay, number 5. Number 5 says, shed A union B intersect C complement in this diagram here. Okay, so first of all, you need to know what a union b is okay if you are to shed if you have two sets like this set a and set b okay and you are told to shed a union b a union b means everything that is making that is forming the two sets combined together okay so a union b will be this will be this all the elements that are making set a and b a union b is this okay this now because they are saying intersect c complement it means you need to shed a union b and then subtract the set c meaning set c should not be shaded in any way so a union b complement will just a union b intersect c complement will just be this if you shed here it means you've shaded the part of the c which is contradicting with this if you shed here Again, it will contradict that. All right. The position vector of a point P is this. Given that the point Q is this, find PQ. Okay, these are also one of the easiest questions. So uh, I always encourage students to uh, make a sketch. Okay, so if you have... Uh, the Cartesian plane like this, x, y, okay? So, point P is at 3,4. So, 3, we are going to say, let's say, this is where 3 is. And 4 is, is here. Let's say 4 is here. So, point Point P is here, 3,4. Okay? So, this is the origin. From the origin, vectors move from the origin. So, point, you can, you can join from, point, from the origin to point P. And because the vector is starting from here, you can, you need to put arrows like this. Okay? And then point Q, they are saying point Q is at negative 1, 1. So negative 1 is here. Then 1 is here. So this is Q, negative 1, 1. Again, you can connect from here, from the origin to point uh, Q. All right. So... You can actually connect these two like this. Now you have OPQ. But in the question, they want you to find 
P Q, the vector P Q. How are you going to find the vector P Q? So now what you have to understand is that this letter that is on the far left here, you may have A, B, P, Q, R, S, but as long as it's on the far left here, it means that's where you're going to start your movement from. So you have P, O, okay? So you have P, O, plus, so you move from P to O, plus O, Q, O, O, Q. All right. So what is P O? So when you are moving from O to P, the vector, because you are going along with the direction, the vector is positive. But when you are moving from P O, so here we have P O, it means the vector is going to be negative. So you are going to have negative uh, 3, 4 plus O Q. O Q because you are moving from the origin to this point, you are going along with a direction to be positive. So you have uh, negative 1, comma 1, like this. Okay. So now, this negative is just multiplying by everything that is, in the, in the, that is inside. So you are going to have negative 3, negative 4, plus negative 1, 1. All right. So now you're having negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Okay. Then negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So uh, what are the instructions? They said find vector PQ. So vector PQ is this one here. So we are going to say PQ is equal to negative 4, negative 3. All right, so number 7 says, given that P, the matrix P is this, and the matrix Q is that, find P to the power T. So whenever you see a matrix, in this case P, that has been raised to the power t, it means they want you to find the transpose of this particular matrix. First of all, what is a transpose of a matrix? So first of all, you need to understand that the numbers that are horizontally like this are called rows. And the numbers that are in a vertical arrangement like this, they are called columns. Okay, so now coming back to coming back to P transpose. All right. So whenever the question is asking you to find the transpose of a matrix, they just want you to in, to make the rows to change the rows to become columns. In other words, you are interchanging the rows by columns. So you can see that you have this row. Now you need to change this row into a column. So you are going to have uh, 4, negative 1, 0. Okay. So you can see that you we have changed this row. It has become a vertical uh, arrangement of numbers, which is a column. Okay. You also do the same with this. So we have 2, 0, 3. Right, so this is a transpose of this matrix. Part B, they want you to find P, Q. Okay, what does it mean, P, Q? It means that you need to multiply the matrix P and Q. So, um, before you carry on with your multiplication, there are things that you are supposed to consider uh, because sometimes multiplication in matrix in matrices does not exist. So first of all, you need to test if multiplication in these matrices, uh, two matrices exist. 
Okay, so first of all, you need to know to write the order of each of these two matrix matrices. So you mentioned the order of a matrix by starting with the number of rows. So you have one, two. So you have two rows, and then how many columns? One, two, three. So it's a two by three matrix. So this is the order. What about this one? How many rows? We have one, two, three. So the rows are three. How many columns? One. So it's a three by three by one matrix. All right. So now what you have to know is that if these inside numbers, these these numbers that are inside are the same. It means that uh, multiplication between the two matrices exists. But if, it, if, if these numbers were different, it means multiplication was not going to exist. All right. In other words, uh, for multiplication to take place to, or to exist, the number of columns of the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. matrix. Now, what, what about uh, these outside numbers? What do they tell you of these? So these outside numbers, they, they, they tell you the order of the matrix that you are going to find after you've done the multiplication. So the order of the matrix that you are going to have after you found, after you've carried out your multiplication will be a two by one two by one matrix all right now that we have established that multiplication exists we can now go ahead and multiply these two matrix matrices so matrix p is this one we have four uh negative one zero uh two zero three which is being multiplied by this matrix 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, matrix uh, Q. So when multiplying matrices, you multiply them following row of the rows of the first matrix, ma matrix by the columns of the second matrices, ma matrix. Okay? So, meaning, we're going to start with uh, this row and finish with, uh, with this column, and then this row and finish with that column, okay? So, we're going to have 4 times 1, so 4 times 1, uh, plus negative 1 times 2, so negative 1 times 2, and plus 0, times three so we are done with this row and this column okay then we come to this row so we have two times one okay so we're talking about this two times one plus uh, zero times two plus three times three three times three All right, everything you put in brackets like this because it's a matrix. Okay, so what is needed now is just to simplify. So 4 times 1 is 4. Then plus negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Then 0, plus, zero times 3 is 0. All right, then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 0 times 2 is 0, plus 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so 4 plus negative 2 plus 0 is just 2. Okay, 4 plus 0, I mean 2 plus 0 is 2, plus 9 is 11. So, this is the answer. This is it. The matrix PQ. 
and just as I said, uh, the order of this matrix is 2 by, so 1, 2, so it's a 2 by 1 matrix, just as I said here about the outside numbers. All right, number eight says an arithmetic progression is given as 1, 7, 13. All right, so this is an arithmetic progression. The other name for the arithmetic progression is uh, the linear sequence. So what is this arithmetic progression or a linear sequence? A linear sequence or the arithmetic progression is a sequence uh, in which uh, its terms increase or decrease with the same amount each time. All right. So they, they are saying find the eighth term. So for you to find the eighth term, because this is an arithmetic uh, progression or the linear sequence, for you to find the eighth term, first of all, you need to find D. D, which is the common difference. Okay. The common difference is found by subtracting the previous term from the next term. So we are going to have 7 minus 1. It should be true also because it, this term, in, this sequence increases by the same amount. It should, so meaning it should also be true when you say 13 minus 7, which gives uh, 6. So uh, the common difference is 6. All right, after finding the, uh, the common difference, you also need to know that you are finding the eighth term. So meaning n is eight, okay? n is eight. So to find the eighth term, we are going to use the formula, the general formula for finding the terms of an arithmetic progression is a n is equal to a, a is the first term. So here meaning we also need to have a. a, the first term is in is one in this sequence. Okay. So the formula for finding the nth term of an arith arithmetic progression is a n is equal to a plus n minus one times the common difference d. Okay. So since we are finding the eighth term, so where there is n, we are going to put eight. So eighth term will be equal to the first term is one so we have one plus n is eight so we have eight minus one and the common difference is six so we are multiplying by six so we have the eighth term being equal to one plus uh, eight eight minus one is seven then times six Okay, 7 times 6, so we have 1 plus 7 times 6 is 42. Then 1 plus 42 is 43. All right, so here the answer is 43. But B, they want you to find the sum of the first 15 terms. So first of all, N, N is here 15 so 15 then d the common difference we found that it's 6 we need a the first term which is 1 in this sequence okay so now the formula for finding the sum of the terms of an arithmetic progression is given by um, sn is equal to n over 2 then 2a plus n minus 1 times the common difference okay so now we already have the data here so we just have to we just need to replace so n is 15 so we have 15 over 2 then 2 times a is 1 so 1 plus n is 15 so 15 minus 1 common difference is 6 okay so we need to simplify this so we have 15 over 2 
2 times 1 is 2 plus 15 minus uh, 1 is 14. So we have 14 times 6. Okay? So this is paper 1 and you, you are not allowed to use the calculator. So we are going to have 15 over 2. Then 2 plus 6 times 14. So since this is paper 1 and you are not allowed to use a calculator, you are going to say, you can even do it separately. You can say 14 times 6. Okay? 6 times 4 is 24. You write 4, you carry 2. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2 is 8. So you have 84. Okay? So here you have 84. So I'm going to solve this from here because of space. Okay? So meaning we're having 15 over 2. Then 2 plus 84 is 86. Okay? So now we can cross cancel because 2 can go into 86. So we can say 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 86 is 43. Uh, now we have 15 times 6. 43. So 15 times 43. Alright. So we are multiplying. Because this is paper 1 and your calculators are not allowed. So we are going to say 3 times 4 is 15. You write 5, carry 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay. Then... 4 times 5 is 20. You carry, you write 0, carry 2. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. Then add. Okay? So here you have a 0. And also here you have a 0. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 4 plus 0 is 4. 0 plus 6 is 6. So this is the sum of the first 15 terms of this sequence. So you have 645. All right. Okay, number nine. The question reads, in a bag, there are four blue marbles, three red marbles, and two white marbles. What is the probability of picking at random a red marble? So, what you have to know first of all is that you have, in this bag, there are four blue plus three red plus two white is equal to nine marbles. Okay? Now, they want you to find the probability of picking a red marble at random. Alright, so a red marble, how many red marbles are there? We have three red marbles. So, you are going to say probability of red is equal to, how many are they? Three out of the total, which is nine. Um, you need to reduce this you need to reduce this fraction by dividing by three okay so finally the answer three three one so you are going to have one over three so that's the probability of a red picking a red marble okay one over three Okay, part B, they want you to solve this equation. So you have 2x squared plus x minus 3 is equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation. There are many ways you can use to solve this. But in this video, we're going to concentrate on the factor method. So for the factor method, you get the coefficient. First of all, you need to find the product. Okay, so for the factor method, first of all, you need to find the product, then the sum, and the factors, okay? So the product is found by 
multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. So you have the coefficient of x squared 2 by the constant here. So 2 by negative 3 is negative 6. The sum is the coefficient of x. So in this case, it's like we have an invisible one here. So the sum is 1. Then the factors, we are looking for factors of the product such that if we add those factors, we'll get the sum, which is 1. If, you, if we multiply them, we'll get uh, the product, 6. So if we say 2 and 3, 2 times 3, we'll get a 6 and not negative. So what we are going to do is uh, we'll give one of these negative if we give two a negative if we say negative two times three we'll get a six yes and if we say negative two plus three we'll get a one yes so the factors are negative two and uh, positive three so meaning we're going to have two x squared minus 2x okay minus 2x then plus uh, 3x then minus 3 is equal to 0 okay then you can see that we have four terms 1 2 3 4 so we factorize the first two terms separately and the second two terms uh, separately so what is common here is 2x. 2x squared divided by 2 is x. Then 2x divided by 2x minus 2x divided by 2x is the minus 1. Then plus what is common there is 3. Uh, 3x divided by 3 is x. Negative 3 divided by 3 is minus 1 is equal to 0. So you can see that what is in the brackets is the same. So we just pick one of them. Okay. And then you pick these outside ones. So 2x plus 3. And then everything is 0. Now, if you have this situation, it's either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. So you have x minus 1 is equal to 0. Or 2x uh, plus 3. 3 is equal to 0. So at this stage, you want the value of x. So meaning m at remaining with x on the on the on the left. Okay, so meaning you need to remove negative 1. Take you need to take it to the other side. So we're going to do that by additive inverse. This is negative 1. For you to remove it, you are going to add a, a 1 so that when you so that you, when you say negative 1 plus 1 this becomes a zero then what you've done on the left you also do it on the right okay also the same here remain with a term that has the variable that you are looking for so this is uh, positive three so to remove this positive three you are subtracting a three so what you've done on the left you also do it on the right all right so let's solve it fr from here so meaning here on the left, you are going to remain with it. x is equal to 1 or 2x is equal to negative 3. This, okay? So you have x is equal to 1. Then divide through by 2, okay? So, or x is equal to negative 3 over 2, which is... Uh, negative one and half okay so x is equal to one or x is e negative one and half all right number 10 a says the inverse set e has these elements and set a is equal to prime numbers okay and set b is that list a union b complement all right so 
uh, first of all we need to know what these prime numbers are so first of all let's list set a so set a we are saying they are prime numbers so prime numbers uh, in the universal set okay now what is a prime number a prime number is a number that has two factors only one and itself okay so uh, set a so zero is not a prime number one is not a prime number because it has only one factor which is one itself two is a prime number because it has two factors one and two itself so two is a prime number three is also a prime number four is not a prime number but five is a prime number then six is not seven yes is a prime number uh, eight no and nine no so uh, the set a is this one now they want you to list set a union b complement what does this mean when they say b complement they mean members that are part of the universal set and are not members of set b okay so b complement means members that are part of of the universal set but are not in set b so set b we have this so um b complement we have zero uh one is not found in b okay then two two also is not found in in b then three three is found in b so three is found in b so because three is found in b we will not put it here and then four okay four then five uh six six is found in b so we'll not put it here then seven yes seven is not then eight is not um what about nine nine is found in b so b complement the set b complement is this one all right now they want you to find um uh, to find a the set a union b complement okay what is a union set is a, a union set is a set that make that is making uh, both set a and b in other words we are combining the elements that are in a and those that are in b all right so uh we'll start zero okay zero one uh two is found in both so we'll just write it once two then three so we have three then do we have four yes four then we have five five is found in both but we'll write it once and then do we have six no do we have seven yes so seven and finally eight all right so this is a union b complement set they wanted you may be wondering why a three is also part of this set it is because three is part of um, set a and so we just combined the elements all right part b the following diagram shows a, reg a regular he hexagonal right pyramid okay so here you need to pay attention to the word regular hexagonal okay find the number of pla planes of symmetry of this pyramid all right so when you look at this pyramid we've been told that it's a regular 
hexagon hexagonal so hexagonal meaning it has um it has six sides or it has six planes okay uh so so we've been told to find the number of planes of of symmetry of this regular hexagonal pyramid okay so what you have to know is that planes of symmetry is similar to lines of symmetry just that when it comes to lines of symmetry you are referring to a 2d shape okay but when you talk about planes of symmetry you are referring to a 3d shape okay so since they, has, they have said this is a regular hexagonal right pyramid because it's a regular uh, object it means that the number of sides of this uh, pyramid is equal to the number of uh, lines of symmetry so it has one two three four five and six it has six sides so meaning the number of planes of symmetry is six so this object has six planes of symmetry all right number 11 but a says town a and b are on longitude 75 degrees west and 45 degrees east respectively find the difference between find the time difference between these two terms okay so i usually encourage students to make um, a sketch okay so you make a sketch of the earth okay so this is you're going to assume that this is uh, longitude 75 degrees uh, west okay then you are going to assume that you draw another one because there is this one that is on the east 45 so you draw another one that is 45 so you assume that this one is 45 degrees east all right and then you have the equator like this so i encourage students to do this because when you make a sketch things become easier okay Just remember they want you to find the difference in time between these two uh, towns so this is point e. so you can label so meaning this is where point a is and then this is where point b is okay so you can see that point a is in the west and point b is on the is in the east so now for you to find the time difference first of all you need to find the difference in degrees okay difference in degrees that's the first step now how are you going to find the difference in degrees if uh, the two towns are in the same region let's say they are all in the west you are going to subtract the degrees these degrees but since these towns are in different regions so for you to find the difference in degrees you are going to add these two so first of all find the difference in degrees which is 75 plus 75 degrees plus uh, 45 degrees giving 120 degrees so with this information you need to understand that the earth rotates on its axis to form day and night 
okay and the complete rotation uh, is 360 degrees and because there are 24 hours in a day we are going to divide this 360 uh, by 24 so that we know how many degrees equal to uh, one hour so when you divide this you are going to have 15 degrees so meaning one hour is equivalent to uh, 15 degrees all right so now we are going to use this uh, to find to finally find the time difference between these uh, two terms. So we are going to say one hour is equal to uh, we found that it's 15 degrees. Okay. Now how many hours are going to make uh, 120 degrees? So here we have 120 degrees. Here we don't know. So we are going to cross multiply. When you cross multiply we are going to have uh, x times 15 will be 15 degrees uh, x is equal to one hour times 120 degrees okay for you to find x divide through by divide both sides of this equation by 15 degrees so we're going to have x is equal to one hour times 120 degrees divided by uh, 15 degrees okay so you have x is equal to so the degrees will cancel the degrees degrees will cancel then we'll have 15 into 120 so because this is paper one no calculators are allowed so you're going to reduce it slowly so we're going to say 3 can go into 15 and 3 can go into 12 so 3 into 15 5 uh, 3 into 12 4 so you have 40 over 5 so 5 can go into 40 so 5 into 5 1 5 into 40 this 40 here is 8 okay so x is 8 8 hours so you conclude and say therefore uh, the time difference is 8 hours okay all right so the next question says an aeroplane took four and a half hours to fly from town b oh sorry from town p to town q okay so when you look at the diagram here uh, an aeroplane uh, took four and a half hours to fly from town town p to town q okay find its average speed speed in knots so they want you to find the average speed which the this aeroplane uh, traveled at in knots okay so they want you to give your answer in knots all right so what we know is that uh, speed is given by distance taken distance covered or taken divided by time taken all right now when we look at our data here in the question we've been told that uh, time we've been given time which is four and a half hours okay uh, what else do we need to calculate speed uh, we need distance so we don't know uh, what distance is a distance from this point point P to point Q now how do we find distance how do we find distance okay so because they have said we need to find the speed in knots it means that we need to find the distance in nautical miles so distance is usually given by uh, theta times 60 degrees okay this is the formula that you have to keep now what is this theta so what you have to know is that theta is a difference in latitudes okay 
So you can see that po uh, point P is lying on latitude 45 degrees uh, south and uh, point Q is lying on zero degrees, which is the equator. So when you find the difference between these two uh, latitudes, you're going to say 45 minus zero, which gives 45, meaning here we are going to have 45 times 60, okay? 45 times 60 is, so because paper one, you are not allowed to use a calculator. So what you do, you get a zero from 60, you put it here at the far end of 45. So you're going to have 450. So because you've removed a, 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 a zero here, you're going to remain with six. Okay. This is how you multiply. Okay. Now you're going to say, 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 5 is 30, write 0, carry 3, and 6 times 4 is 24, 24 plus uh, 3 is 27, okay? So meaning the distance is 2,700 nautical miles, all right? Now we can use this distance here when finding the speed, so we are going to have Distance 2700, 2700 divided by time. Time is um, here, four and half hours. Okay, so here you just have to change it into an improper fraction. So we're going to have 2700 over four times two is eight plus one is. 9 over 2. All right, some people start shivering when they reach here. Uh, there's nothing hard here. Uh, is same, this is same as 2,700 divided by, this over sign is same as divided by 9 over 2. All right, now you are going to have 2,700. Um, when you multiply, when dividing fractions, uh, there is this which you use. You, you you say keep, then change, and flip. Whenever you are dividing fractions, you need to uh, bear in mind this. So you keep the first fraction as it is, then change. The division sign into multiplication and as soon as you change it into multiplication then you flip you flip okay so you're going to have two over nine all right so keep this in mind all right uh this is paper one so you can reduce it from here so nine into nine one nine into 27 is three and then these zeros will come here, okay? So, meaning you are, you are going to have uh, 300 times 2. 300 times 2 is 600 knots because, okay, 600 knots. So, this is the speed that, the speed at which that aeroplane flu. Alright, question 12a says solve uh, this exponential equation. Alright, so we have uh, 5 to the power 3x, negative 3x is equal to uh, 125. Alright, this is an exponential equation. So uh, 5 here is the base. And also 125 is the base. Okay? So this is same as to the power 1. Alright. So whenever you are given such an exponential equation, uh, for you to solve it, you need to change the bigger base into the smaller base. In this case, we're going to change this base 125 into a smaller base of 5. So we're going to have 5 to the negative 3x is equal to uh, 5 raised to the power what? So that you get back your 
125. So it's 5 to the raised to the power uh, 3. All right. Now, by the laws of indices, if you have a base A that has been raised to the power M, uh, which is equal to the same base A that is being raised to the power N, then it means that M is equal to N. All right. So we're going to apply this here because we have 5, 5 as the same base. And so we are going to have negative 3x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by negative 3. All right. Then x is equal to, okay, this is negative 3, negative 1. All right. So x is equal to negative 1. All right. Part B says the diagram shows a sector x or y x or y the angle subtended at the center is 70 degrees and radius and the radius is 18 degrees yeah so now the question says uh, calculate the area of a sector x or y taking pi to be 22 over 7. all right so they want you to find the area of this sector so area of a sector is given by theta over 360 degrees uh, times pi r squared, okay? All right, so area is equal to uh, theta in this case is the central angle, so you have 70 degrees over 360 degrees times pi, pi, we've been told that pi is 22 over 7, so 22 over 7 times radius is 18, so we're going to have 18 squared. All right? Uh, 0, 0 can cancel, can reduce. All right? Then 2 can go into 22, 11 times. 2 can go into 36, 18 times. Again, 7 can go into 7 one time, even here one time. So we are going to have area is equal to 1 over 18. So 1 over 18 times 11 here, then times 18 squared is same as 18 times 18 like this okay so because this is paper one you make sure that you are being careful you can see the way i'm doing it so that i don't deal with big numbers so you can see that if this 18 and one of these 18 18s will cancel so that's how you work out in paper one guys so you are going to remain with area is equal to 1 times 11 times 18 so which is just 11 times 18. Now, because this you are not allowed to use a calculator, you are supposed to, you are going to say 18 times 11 and then multiply it like this. Okay? 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 1 is is 1. Then 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 1 is 1. All right, then here you add, right? Then here is same as you have a zero. So eight plus zero is eight. Then one plus eight is nine. Then here is same as you have zero. Zero plus one is one. So you conclude and say, therefore, area of this sector is 198 square centimeters. All right? Question 13 says the mass of a bag of millimeal is 25.2 kilogram, kilograms. Calculate the tolerance. All right. Uh, so what you have to know is that uh, tolerance is equal to the upper bound the upper bound 
minus the lower bound. So the upper bound is also called the maximum value and the lower bound is also called the minimum value. And this is the true value that we've been given, okay? This is a true value. So for you to find tolerance, you are supposed to subtract the lower bound from the upper bound. Okay, so we need to find the upper bound. So I'm going to find it here. So upper bound. How do we find the upper bound? We use the true value, okay? So the true value is 25.2. Right, you need to pay attention to the true value. If the true value has one decimal place, it means, so we are saying one decimal place, if the true value has one decimal place in this, like in this case, uh, the absolute error is 0 0.05. Okay? If it has, the, the true value has two decimal places, then the absolute error is 0 0.05. 0, 0.05 and if it has three decimal places it's going to be 0 0.0005 and so on so these are absolute error errors okay all right now when you look at our true value this one it has one decimal place and because it has one decimal place it means we are going to add, for, for us to find the upper bound, we are going to add a 0 0.5 to this value, true value. Okay? So we are going to add a 0 0.05. And this gives 25.25 kilograms. Okay, so that's the upper bound. Now let's now find the lower bound. The lower bound or the minimum value. So for the maximum value or the upper bound, we added a 0 0.5. But now on the lower bound, we are going to subtract 0 0.05 from 25.2. So we're going to have 25.2 minus 0 0.05. And this gives uh, 25.15. All right. So now we go back to our formula for finding the tolerance. Okay. So we're going to have tolerance is equal to the upper bound. The upper bound is 25.25. 25.25. Then minus the lower bound, the lower bound is 25.15. All right. Um, in case people may be wondering on how to add and subtract uh, decimals. So this is what we're going to do. Remember, this is paper one. So we're going to say 25.25, okay? Minus 25.15. Uh, one five you write them vertically like this okay make sure that the the place values are aligned you can see that uh, this is it ones tens okay make sure that the ones are aligning with the other ones even these tens are aligning with the other tens then this one is a tenth so the tenth place is aligning with the other tenth place. Even this one, the hundredth place is aligning with the other hundredth place. All right. So we're going to have five minus five is zero. Two minus one is one point. This point, you just drop it here. So then five minus five is zero, then zero, zero. So meaning the answer here is uh, zero point one all right so this is the tolerance okay so the tolerance is 0 0.1 or 0 0.10 it's just the same all right the next question is telling us to find the relative error okay so relative error re is given by 
uh, absolute absolute error um, yeah absolute error divided by the true value the true the true value okay now <clears throat> remember we said because our true value is 25.2 which has two decimal places meaning the absolute error that we're going to use is a 0 point 0 0.05 okay so meaning here we are going to have uh, 0 0.05 divided by true value is 25.2 all right so you are dividing this so when you look at these numbers the numerator has two decimal places and the denominator has one decimal place so because uh the numerator has two decimal places it means that we are going to multiply the, the numerator by 100 and what we've done here we also do it here okay so that we have a whole number on top so we are going to have 0 0.05 times 100 you are going to have 5 over uh, 25 times 25.2 times 100 the point will move twice to the right so 1 2 so it will be 2520 okay now you start dividing uh, 5 can go into 2520 so 5 into 5 1 5 into 25 is 5, okay? 5 into 2 is 0, okay? Then 5 into 20 is 4. So meaning the answer is going to be 1 over 504. So relative error is equal to 1 over 504. Number 14 says in the diagram, three points A, B, and C are on level ground. The bearing of B from A is 0, 3, 5 degrees. So the bearing of B while standing at A. So the bearing of B while standing at A is this one here, 0, 3, 5. And angle ABC is equal to 90. This angle here is 90. And angle ACB is 40 degrees. Angle ACB is 40 degrees. Now the question says, find the bearing of A from C. All right. They want you to find the bearing of A from C. So the word from, in the previous videos, those that have not watched my videos on bearing, you are free to go and watch it on this same channel. Okay, so the word from in bearing is very important. So when they say find the bearing of A from C, it means that they want you to find the bearing of A whilst you are standing at C. Okay, so where you are standing at C, you are standing at C. Where you are standing at C, you are supposed to draw a north like this. You draw a north where you are standing at C. So bearing is measured clockwise from the north. So you are going to move clockwise from the north like this until you meet the line that is joining A and C. Okay, so meaning the bearing they want you to find is this one here okay now how are you going to find this bearing so you need to know this angle here for you to find this bearing so for you to know that angle we are going to consider extending this north here like this okay so you can see that this is this north and this north are parallel lines and this is a transversal 
So, and you have this angle here, meaning this angle here is also going to be 35 degrees because they are alternate angles. You can see that they are, they are forming a Z shape, a Z shape here. Okay? So since the entire angle here is 90 degrees, okay, and out of 90 degrees you have 35 degrees. So for you to find this remaining angle here, you are supposed to subtract uh, 9, you are supposed to say 90 minus 35, which gives uh, 55 degrees. So meaning this angle here is 55 degrees. Okay? So you are also going to see that this north and this north are parallel lines. And so uh, this angle here, the 55, is alternate to this angle here. You can see that another Z is being formed, is being formed here. So meaning if this angle is alternate to this angle, it means even this angle is 55 degrees. All right. Now that we have found what this angle is, for us to find the bearing, for us to find this bearing here, this bearing here, we are going to say 360, which is the full 10. So we say 360 degrees, which is a full 10, a full 10 from here, going round like this up, up to here back is 360. Now out of the full 10, the 360, we've been given 40 and 55. So we are going to say uh, 40 degrees plus 55 degrees. All right. So we're going to have 360 degrees minus 40 plus, nine, uh, plus 55 is 95. All right. So we're going to have 360 degrees minus 95. Okay. Here, you are going to say this, then 10 minus 5 is 5. Here, you are remaining with 5, okay? So, 15 minus 9 is 6, okay? Um, then, here, you are remaining with 2. 2 minus 0 is 2, all right? So, you conclude and say the bearing of a from C is 265 degrees. Okay? Then part B, part B, they want you to find the bearing of A from B. The bearing of A whilst you are standing at B. So at, at B, they want you to find the bearing of A from B. Okay? Meaning, they want you to find the bearing of A whilst you are standing at B. So, the point at which you are standing, which is at B, you are supposed to draw a north, but in this case, we already have a north. Okay? So, we, also, we are also going to move uh, clockwise, clockwise from the north until we meet the line that connects A and B. So, clockwise, like this, until we meet the line that connects A and B. So meaning the bearing they want you to find is this one here. Okay? So that's a bearing. Now, when you look at this, this is a straight line. Okay? So from the top north, coming down up to here, up to here, it's 180 degrees because this is these are angles on a straight line which add up to 180 okay now you need to add this angle here from here up to here okay for you to find the bearing of a from b okay so in other words you are adding 180 plus 35 so you are having you are adding 180 degrees plus 35 degrees and then this gives 5 8 plus 3 is 11 then this is 1 plus 1 is 2 so this is the bearing of 
of A from B, which is 215 degrees. Okay, number 15. Given that the function f of x is this one and g of x is this one, find f inverse. The inverse of the function f of x. So whenever you see a function that has been raised to the power negative 1, it means they want you to find the inverse. All right? At a, they want you to find the, the inverse of the function f of x. Uh, but remember, the function f of x is this one. So f, the function f of x is equal to 3x minus 5 over 2. All right? So how are you going to find the inverse of this function? First of all, you are supposed to let this part here, the f of x, to be equal to y. Change this f of x to y. Okay? So meaning you are going to have, okay, you are going to have y is equal to 3x minus 5 over 2. Right? After doing that, the next step is to swap uh, y with x and x with y. What I, what I mean is you substitute or you exchange y with x and x with y. So meaning where there is y, you are going to put x. Okay, so you are going to have x here. I've changed it to, 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 to x is equal to 3. Where there is x here, I'm changing it to y minus 5 over 2. All right? Uh, at this stage, uh, your m should be making, making y the subject, okay? Make y the subject. That should be your m. All right, for, for us to make y the subject, we are supposed to first remove the fraction. Okay? We remove the fraction by multiplying both sides of this equation by the same denominator, the denominator 2. If the denominator was 3, we are going to multiply by 3 if it was 4, and so on. So what we've done on the right, we also do it on the left so that the equation remains balanced. So we're going to have uh, 2x, because 2, x, 2 times x is 2x, then is equal to uh, this 2 and this 2 cancel, and then what, you, what is going to remain is 3y minus 5. All right. So your aim is to make y the subject of the formula. Okay? And because your aim is to make y the subject of the formula, meaning we need to remove this other term here. On the right, we should only remain with the term that has y. So how are we going to remove this term? We will remove it by additive inverse. We are going to add the 5 here, so that when you say negative 5 plus 5, this becomes a 0. If it was positive, we are going to subtract a 5, okay? So what we've done here on the right-hand side of the equation, we also do it on the left-hand side. So meaning we're going to have 2x and then plus 5 is equal to 3y. Then this is now a 0. So for us to make y the subject to the formula, we're going to divide through by a 3 like this. Then 3, 3 cancels. What is going to remain is uh, 2x plus 5 over 3 is equal to y. So this alone is the inverse. So what is uh, remaining now is just to conclude. It's just to conclude and say, therefore, the inverse of the function f of x is equal to uh, 2x plus 5 over 3. So this is the inverse, the required. Okay, part B, which is this one, they want you to find the value of uh, 
f inverse of 5. Okay? Remember, the inverse of the function f, we've already found it as this one, which is 2x plus 5. So, remember, f inverse of x is 2x plus 5 over, over 3, this one here, over 3. So now when they write like this, it means that in this function, f of inverse of x, wherever there is x, you substitute a 5. Okay, so this will imply that f inverse of 5, is equal to 2 okay i'm going to open brackets like this plus 5 over 3 now what are we putting in the brackets we are putting a 5 here okay so now we go ahead 2 times 5 is 10 plus 5 over 3 okay so we have 10 plus 5 is 15 over 3 and this gives um, 5 when you divide 15 by 3. So you conclude and say therefore f inverse of 5 is 5. All right. But you see, they want you to find, okay, they want you to find the composition of the function f of g of x. Okay? The composition of the function f of g of x. Now, what does this mean? Okay? What it means is that the function f, sorry, the function g of x is inside the function f. So, this can be written like this. Okay, this means that the function g of x is inside the function f. Now, what is this function uh, g of x? The function g of x is this one here, uh, x plus 2. So, you are going to say uh, f, then x plus 2. This is g, okay? Now, this will imply that the function f of x plus 2 is equal to, so meaning in the function f here, in the function f here, wherever there is x, you are going to replace uh, the function g, which is x plus 2. Okay, so the function f is 3x minus 5 over 2. So the function f is 3. I'm going to open brackets, then minus 5 over 2. Okay? Now, what are you going to put in here? In here, you're going to replace this g. Okay? You're going to put g, which is x plus 2. Alright. So now we just have to expand and simplify. Okay. So 3 times x is 3x. Then 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. Then minus 5 over 2. Then we can simplify further. So we're going to have 3x uh, 6 minus 5 is positive 1 over 2. Uh, therefore, f of g of x is equal to 3x plus 1 over 2. Alright, so the next question says, in the diagram, a, b, c, and d are points on the circumference of the circle with radius o. So, the points A, B, C, and D are points on the circumference. Then they are saying B, D is equal to A, D. B, D is equal to A, D. Alright. 
So this, this side is equal to that side. That's what they are saying. And angle ADB, ADB is 40 degrees. Now the first question says, find angle AOB. Angle AOB. So angle AOB is this one here. Now when you look at angle AOB, how are you going to find angle AOB? So when you look at this angle, AOB is at the center. And this angle 40 here is, uh, is on the circumference. Okay? And for you to find angle AOB, you are going to apply the property that says angles at the center, the angle at the center is twice the angle on the circumference. So since we've been given a 40 degrees on the circumference, it means that for us to find the angle at the center, we are supposed to multiply this 40 degrees by 2. Okay? So we are going to say uh, angle AOB is equal to 2 times 40 degrees, which gives 80 degrees. The next question, they want you to find BCD, angle B, C, D. Now, how are you going to find angle B, C, D? This means that to find angle B, C, D, we are going to use this triangle here. Okay? We are going to use this triangle because uh, this triangle is an isosceles triangle because they are saying this side is equal to that side and we've been given that. So for us to find angle BCD, we are going to say, we are going to assume that this is X and this is X. Because an associate's triangle has uh, equal base angles. So we are going to say X, okay, let me just write X here and also X here, okay? So X plus X plus 40 degrees, we should get... 180 degrees okay so when you add this angle this angle and this angle we are going you are supposed to get it a 60 degrees i mean a 180 degrees so x plus x would be 2x uh, plus 40 is equal to 180 degrees okay this is degrees so let's subtract 40 on both sides okay in other words, I'm taking the 40 degrees the other side by additive inverse. So you're going to have 2x. Uh, this becomes a 0 is equal to 180 minus 40 is 140 degrees. So to find x, divide by 2 both sides. Okay. So x is equal to 70 degrees. So meaning this entire angle here is 70 degrees. Even this entire angle is 70 degrees. All right. So now, since they want angle B, C, D, okay, this angle here, we are going to apply the property that says uh, opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. So you can see that the one that is inside here is a quadrilateral. So the opposite sides here, this side is opposite to that side. So the opposite angles of a, quad, of a cyclic quadrilateral should add up to 180 degrees. So we are going to say uh, angle B, C, D is equal to, so this opposite angle to this angle is 70 degrees. So we are going to say 180 degrees uh, minus 70 degrees, which gives 110 degrees reason opposite angles of a cyclic quad okay quadrilateral then part c they want you to find angle o b d angle o b d okay so they want you to find this angle here this angle here now the question is how are you going to find that angle 
remember we found that this angle here is 80 degrees okay angle a or b and uh, so any distance from the center to the circumference of the circle is the radius so meaning this distance here is equal to this distance here all right so because this distance is equal to this distance and we have um 80 degrees here we also have it means that we also have an isosceles triangle with 80 degrees and then this angle here from here up to here from here up to here should be equal okay so we are going to say we are going to give this let's say y okay so we are going to say y plus y plus here is 80 so this is 80 degrees you should get 180 degrees so this will be 2y plus 80 degrees you should get 180 degrees so in other words we are saying the sum of angles in a triangle okay so subtract 8 both sides 80 degrees okay then we'll have 2y is equal to 180 divided minus 80 is 100. Okay? 100 then divide by 2 to find the value of y. So y is equal to 50 degrees. So meaning this angle here is 50 degrees. This angle here. Even this, this angle is also uh, 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 50 degrees. Now, for us to find angle OBD, okay, angle OBD, you are going to say, because the entire angle here in the first place, we found that it's 70, okay? So, for us to find this angle here, we are going to say 70, which is the entire angle, minus 50, this 50 here, so that we find the, the other remaining angle here. So, we are going to say... 70 degrees minus 50 degrees which gives uh, 20 degrees all right so this is the answer all right so question 17 a says the diagram shows triangle p and q okay you can see these two triangles uh, describe fully the single transformation which maps triangle p onto triangle q so you can see that this is the object this is the object this is the shape that has not gone undergone any transformation and this is the image all right now before you start answering you need to ask yourself uh, some questions number one um, are the sizes of these two triangles the same yes they are the same what about the angles? Are the angles the same? Yes. You can see that this angle is equal to that angle. This angle is equal to that and that is equal to that. All right. So the only thing that we can think about are uh, reflection or uh, rotation or translation all right so now let's look let's see if it's reflection reflection you are supposed to have a mirror line and these points should do be mirroring each other now when you look at this uh, the, the points are not mirroring each other so um, reflection is out what about rotation so the shapes are facing the same direction, this side, okay? If the shapes are facing the same direction, automatically, uh, rotation is out. Uh, now, translation. So this is a translation. Why is it translation? Because this, look at this. This is, uh, this, is, uh, this is the object and this is the image. Let's look at this point. Let's translate this point into onto this. So we are moving one, two, three, 
so we've moved uh, three because we are moving to the right is positive three then so we are saying one two three then one two so we've moved it two times downwards when you are moving down it means you're going to have negative so the column vector is this one that we've established after after translating this this point here now let's look at this other point the vector should be the same okay so one two three then one two okay so still this vector is being maintained what about this one one two three okay so the three is okay what about downwards one two okay that so now now that we have established that it's a translation and the, ve the column vector is this one we're going to say uh, shape shape p was mapped onto shape q by a translation with a column vector three comma negative two all right part b in the answer space below is a, is an incomplete flowchart for calculating the volume v of a cone given the radius r and height r h of the cone complete the flow chart okay so this is the formula for finding uh, the volume of a cone this is the formula for finding the uh, the volume of a cone all right now so this is the formula for finding the, vo the volume of a cone all right now this is a computer program here that we are supposed to complete. So what you have to know is that constants are not fed in the computer. Okay? Constants are not fed into the computer. What are going to be fed in the computer are these uh, variables, R and H. So here you are going to say enter R and H, the radius and the height. Okay, now the next thing that you are going to, to write is the formula itself here. Okay, it's a formula itself here. Volume is equal to, uh, so in computer language, you are going to write one with slash like this over three. Then times will be a star pi times radius, because it's radius squared, we're going to say radius times radius, then times h. All right, so it means you, 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 you've completed the flow chart. Okay, so number 18, uh, z, z varies inversely as a square of x, so z, varies inversely so inversely meaning it's here down here the denominator inversely as the square of x and directly as y so meaning y is direct here so in other words they are saying z varies directly as y and inversely as the x squared or as the square of x all right and z is 6 and x is z, negative 3 and y is 27. Find the, so part A, they want you to find the value of, of k, the constant variation. But when you look at this, you don't have k. So what you do is that you are going to introduce 
an echo sign here. Once you introduce an echo sign, then there will be K. So we are going to say Z is equal to KY over X squared. Okay? Now they have said Z is Z. Now they want you to find the value of K. When Z is 6, so where there is Z, we are going to put 6 is equal to uh, K. Then where there is Y, 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 Y is 27. So we are going to put 27 here over X. X is negative 3. So negative 3 squared. Okay. So we are going to have 6 is equal to uh, K times 27 is 27 K over 3 negative 3 squared is is positive 9 okay now when you look at this you can actually reduce 9 into 27 is um, is 3 3 times k is 3k so divide both sides by 3 so you have k is equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2 so this is k B, they are saying the value of Z when Y is equal to negative 6 and X is equal to negative 2. Alright, so the equation that you are going to use to solve B, to, to work out B, is this one. This equation that you make here is very important. So what you are going to say is, so this is B, uh, Z is equal to KY over X squared. Okay, so they want you to find Z when Y is negative 6 and X is negative 2. Okay, so we're going to say K, we found K is 2, so we're going to say 2 times Y, Y is negative 6, okay, negative 6 over X is negative 2, so negative 2 squared, okay, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, then negative 2 squared is, neg is 4, positive, because everything is in brackets. Okay? So negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. So this is the value of Z. Now let's look at part C, the last one. Values of X when Y is equal to 8 and Z is equal to 1. So again, this equation, the, the, the first equation is very important. So Z is equal to KY over X squared. Okay. So they want you to find the value of the values, actually, not only one, but values of X. So Z is one. So we're going to have one is equal to K is two. We found two times Y. Y is eight. Then divide by x squared okay so you're going to have 1 is equal to 2 times 8 is 16 over x squared so cross multiply here you are going to have x squared is equal to 16 so to find the value of x you take square roots on both sides Then you are going to have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4. So, therefore, x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to positive 4. All right, this is the answer. All right, question 19a says, or invest 50,000 kwacha in a government bond at 9% simple interest per annum. How much will the bond be worth after three years? All right, so here, uh, first of all, you need to find the interest. And then after finding the interest, you come and add it back to, to, the, to the principal. Okay, so first of all, you find interest so this is simple interest so simple interest is given by the formula uh, interest is equal to 
the principal times the rate times time PRT divided by 100 okay this 100 comes from the from the rate because the rate is 9% so percent out of 100 all right so the principal is the is the amount that is being invested okay so we're going to have 50000 times the rate is 9 so just write 9 because in the formula we already have uh, a, a, th a hundred okay times time time we've been given three years so times three then everything divided by hundred all right so this zero and this zero are cancelling this zero and this zero is also cancelling so what is remaining now is 500 okay these are two zeros remember this is paper one so you're not allowed to use a calculator so you need to be smart on how you are do dealing with the numbers uh, make sure that you don't deal with big numbers whenever there is a temptation to do with big numbers you cancel them like this you simplify them like this so here we are remaining with 500 uh, times 9 um, times 3 okay this is becoming easier all right so here again you need to be careful because this is paper one uh, you can say 500 times 3 okay 500 times 3 is 1500 so you have 1500 times 9 okay so we did this and that okay we got 1500 then times 9 okay so since you have zeros like this you can just say you can multiply it this way 1500 uh, times times 9 like this okay so 9 times 0 is 0 then 9 times 0 again is 0 9 times 5 is uh, 45 so you write 5 uh, carry 4 9 times 1 is 9 9 plus 4 is 13 okay so this is the interest Okay, 13,500 is the interest. Is the interest that was earned in three years. Now, for you to find uh, the total bond, okay, so now we're going to say total bond, total bond is going to be equal to um, the principal, which is 50,000. plus interest okay so this is the interest and the, the principal is uh, 50,000 kwacha so 50,000 kwacha plus the interest which is 13,000 kwacha 13,500 kwacha and this gives uh, 63,500 Quarter. So this is the bond in in in, in 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 three years. Then let's look at B. So question B says two cylindrical tins are geometrically similar. The radius of the base of the smaller tin is six centimeters, and that of the bigger tin is nine centimeters. So here you can say smaller tin you have two remember you have two similar tins you have smaller tin and you also have a bigger tin and then the radius of the smaller tin is uh, six centimeters so six centimeters and that of the bigger one is nine centimeters okay nine centimeters so given that the volume of the bigger tin is uh, uh, 108 cubic centimeters. So 
we've also been given uh, the volume of the bigger one to be 108 cubic centimeters so <clears throat> they are saying given that the volume of the bigger tin is 108 which is the one that i've written there find the volume of the smaller tin okay so first of all for you to find the volume here uh, you need to write this radius uh, into a ratio so you have six to nine okay six to nine but when you look at these ratios uh, they can be reduced you can see that three can go into six uh, two times and three can go into nine uh, three times all right after doing that because you are looking for the volume okay because you are looking for the volume and remember you have to remember that volume is measured in cubic units so because of that reason you are going you are supposed to uh, cube you are supposed to raise the ratio uh, each of the numbers in the ratio to the power uh, three okay because you are dealing with volume all right so uh, two cubed is same as two times two times two which is eight two and then three cubed is same as three times three times three which is 27 so now this is the ratio that you are going to use to find the volume of the smaller tin so remember uh, the volume of the bigger tin we've been given that is 108 so 108 you are going to write it here under the ratio of the bigger tin which is 27 you write it under 27 so 108 okay then um we don't know the volume for the bigger tin so now what you are going to do is you are going to cross multiply here all right so you are going to say a x times 27 it will be 27 x is equal to okay 8 times 108 okay 8 times 108 so please when you reach at this stage no need of uh, multiplying and finding the value here because this is paper one and you are not allowed to use a calculator if you multiply and find the value here uh, you are going to have big number a big number here which is going to be very difficult for you to work with so to find the value of x you are going to divide it by 27 both sides of this equation okay like this so this and that cancels you have x is equal to at this stage uh, you can see you can simplify okay um, 9 can go into 27 three times then 9 can go into 10 one time then remainder one okay so nine into 18 uh, is two again a three can go into 12 so three into three one three into 12 four times so you are having eight times four okay so meaning x is equal to eight times four and therefore x is equal to um, 8 times 4 is 32 cubic centimeters okay so you conclude and say this is the volume of the smaller tin all right number 20a the diagram shows a right angled triangle abc triangle abc bc is produced to d so uh, BC is produced to D okay then SC is equal to 13 centimeters this okay and cos BSC is equal to 13 over I mean 12 over 13 find the value of tan SCD tan uh, ACD so this is the angle that they want you to find 
than A, C, D. Right, how are we going to find that? First of all, uh, you need to write uh, Sokatoa, which is going to help you uh, know the sides. Okay, so Sokatoa. So Katoa. Okay, now the secret is here. This is the secret where the secret of everything is. Because they are saying cos BSC, cos BSC. So what is which angle is this BSC? BAC. So they are talking about this angle here. Okay, the cosine of this angle is equal to twelve over thirteen. Okay, now because they are talking about cosine in our Sokatoa here, so we'll go here where there is car. And the C here is symbolizing cosine. Okay? Cosine is equal to adjacent. A is for adjacent and H is the hypotenuse. So now, when you are looking at this angle here, which side is the adjacent? So the adjacent is the side that is attached to this very angle apart from the hypotenuse. So the adjacent is this one here. So this is the adjacent okay and then the hypotenuse is this one hypotenuse when you are referring to this angle okay so cosine BAC cosine BAC the cosine of this angle is equal to according to Sokatoa here is adjacent this adjacent here over hypotenuse now when you look at the adjacent here so this means that the value for the adjacent is 12 here. This side is 12. So the value for the adjacent is 12. So here you have 12. All right? It's 12 centimeters. Um, yeah. So that you, when you say adjacent over hypotenuse, you go back to 12 over 13. All right? So now the question is saying find the value of tan ACD, tan ACD, so this angle here. Now, this angle is an obtuse angle. So, you cannot find the tan of this angle without finding the tan of this angle here. Okay? So, tan from Sokatoa is equal to opposite over adjacent. So, if you are referring to this angle here, then... The opposite is this one. This one now becomes the opposite. Then which one becomes the adjacent? The adjacent is a side that is attached to the very angle other than the hypotenuse. So this now becomes the adjacent. Alright? So meaning, since this is missing here, this side is missing here, for us to find uh, the turn of this angle here, we are supposed to find this side first. So now, how are we going to find that side? We'll apply uh, Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem says if you want to find the long, the longest side, this one, the hypotenuse, you are supposed to add the square of this side and the square of this side. Now, if you've been given the hypotenuse and one side, one of these sides, it means that you are supposed to uh, subtract the square of the, this side and then find the square to find this side here. So what we are going to say is, what we are going to do is 13 squared minus uh, this one, the opposite, which is 12 squared. You should get uh, BC, BC squared. Okay? So now, uh, 13 squared is 169 minus uh, 12 squared is 144. It should get BC squared. Okay. 169 minus 144 is 25 is equal to BC squared. Now we are looking for BC, not BC squared. So meaning we are going to take square roots on both sides. Okay. So... 
the square root of 25 because this is distance we are not going to have two roots we we'll use the positive one there's no way you can have a negative distance so this is distance you're going to pick a positive square root of 25 which is 5 is equal to bc so bc here is 5 all right so now we can go ahead and find the turn of this angle okay so that we use this turn this the turn of this angle to find this one that they are looking for so let's find the turn of this angle so turn a c b is equal to what is tan according to Sokatoa here is opposite over adjacent so if you are referring to this angle the side that is opposite to this angle is this one where there is 12 so we are going to have 12 over um, adjacent adjacent is this one here the side that is attached to this angle other than the longest side the hypot which is the hypotenuse so here we have 5. Okay? So now that we know what tan ACB is, now for us to find this external angle here, this one here, we'll just include the negative because this is the obtuse angle. Okay? So we're going to say, therefore, uh, tan of a C D than A C D we we'll just put the negative, include the negative to this turn here. So it will be negative 12 over 5. Right. Part B, the question says find the equation of a straight line passing through the points negative 2, comma 3 and uh, parallel is parallel to the straight line whose equation is this all right number one thing that you are supposed to know about parallel lines is that they have they have the same gradient okay they have the same gradients all right so now You've been given this point and an equation. So we want to find a, uh, the equation of the straight line that is passing through this point and is parallel to the straight line whose equation is that. Okay? So first of all, let's rewrite. So secondly, you need to rewrite this uh, given equation. So we have 2y minus 3x is equal to 5 right now after rewriting it, you need to make sure that you write this given equation in the form y is equal to mx plus c so this equation has to be changed to be in this form so that we find the gradient so you m at uh, remaining with y or making y the subject of the formula okay so, how are you going to make y the subject of the formula? We are supposed to take this other term to the other side. In other words, we are going to do that by additive inverse. This is three, negative 3x. For us to remove it, we are going to add a 3x. So, what we've done on the left of this equation, we also do it on the right. Okay? So, that the equation remains balanced. So, uh, also, if you say negative 3 plus 3x this becomes a zero what is going to remain is that so you have 2y uh, this becomes a zero is equal to or well, this is actually 3x okay is equal to now because you want your equation to be in this form you are going to start writing the 3x first okay 3x then plus 5 okay your aim is to get y by itself like this so you have to divide you have to divide by two on each terms okay so this that cancels then you have y is equal to um three over two x 
plus uh, 5 over 2. Alright. Now, here M, M is uh, the gradient. Okay, so this is the gradient. M is the, the gradient. So, meaning here, the coefficient of x is the, the gradient. Okay, so we're going to call this as m1. Alright, this is m1. But remember, remember that when the two lines are parallel to each other, they should have the same gradient. So, meaning the gradient 1 should be equal to gradient 2. Alright, so with that information, uh, we are going to now use this formula for us now to find the equation of the other line. Okay, so y is equal to m, so we are going to say m2, because here we say this is m1, m2x plus c. So remember this uh, equation has the point is passing through this point which is negative 2 comma 3 so now where there is y here you are going to put the y value here which is 3 and then where there is m2 because the gradient is the same for parallel lines you are going to put uh, the gradient which is 3 over 2 then where there is x you are going to put negative uh, 2 your aim is to find the intercept where this line is crossing the y axis so now let's just do that so we're going to say where there is y we're going to put a 3 is equal to the gradient we found that the gradient is 3 over 2 so 3 over 2 then uh, x x is negative 2 so negative 2 plus t is the one that we're looking for which is the y intercept so we're going to have 3 is equal to um, we can cross cancel here 2 into 2, 1 2 into negative 2 you're going to have negative 1 so here you're going to have a 3 times negative 1 will be negative 3 plus C alright then you want C to be on its own so you're going to use additive inverse you add a 3 so that when you say negative 3 plus 3 it becomes a 0 uh, so what you've done here you also do it uh, here okay so now you have this becomes a 6 is equal to this is a 0 C alright now you come back to this equation this time around you are only replacing the gradient and the value of C so you have Y is equal to m2 x plus c <clears throat> so y will be equal to the gradient is this same one here 3 over 2 x plus the, the y intercept is 6 okay so this is the line that is parallel uh, to to the line of this equation okay all right number 21 write three inequalities that define the unshaded region r in the diagram below okay so you have this diagram okay with these lines okay now they want you to write the three inequalities that are defining this region the unshaded region r so there are a few things that you're supposed to know when dealing with such qu such questions uh, number one you need to know the nature nature of of the line okay if it's a it's a solid line like this it means your inequality is going to have either the greater or equal to symbol or the less or equal to symbol because it's a solid line number two 
you need to know if uh, it's a dotted line okay if it's a dotted line it's either your inequality is going to have the greater than symbol or the less than symbol all right and then number three yes you, you have to know that uh, it in inequalities you shed you shed the unwanted region unwanted region all right so let's go ahead and write these three inequalities that are defining this unshaded region r all right so first of all you need to look at the lines that have the easiest equations okay so the lines with the easiest equations uh, are those lines that cross either the x-axis or the y-axis only not those that are crossing both the y-axis and the x-axis for example this one or that one so in this case this equation this line here has the easiest equation okay uh, this line here has the equation y is equal to uh, it's crossing at one so y is equal to one all right now you need to ask yourself a question here how will be the inequality for this uh, equation so the inequality for this equation will, will be determined based on is number one is the line solid or dotted so when you look at this line this is a solid line so meaning your inequality the inequality for this equation will either have the greater than or equal to or uh, less than or equal to okay now we have established that this equation will have one of these here one of these symbols here okay um now the other thing the other question that you're supposed to ask yourself which one is the unwanted region or which one is the shaded region the shaded region is the less part here is the less part which is the unwanted region meaning the greater part here is the wanted region and we're going to write the inequality based on the wanted region the greater part so meaning this equation is going to have the inequality y is greater or equal to one all right hope that's very clear all right let's now find the equation of this line okay um, i'll name this line as a so let's find the equation of this line so that we use that equation to come up with the, the inequality all right so first of all for us to come up with the equation of this line we need to collect the points so we're going to collect the points here and here where they are crossing the x and y axis so here the point is 0 comma 6 okay and then we also have uh, this point where this line is crossing which is uh, six comma zero okay six comma zero so now we're going to use these points to come up with a gradient of this line okay so gradient m is given by uh, y2 minus y1 uh, over x2 minus x1 okay so when you look at these points we don't have the x1 the x2 the y1 y2 so what you do is you make any of these points to be point one so let's make this first point to be point one so meaning we're going to have x1 and then this is y1 this will be uh, x2 then y2 all right we can now substitute in this 
for us to find the, uh, the, the gradient. So we're going to have uh, y2 is 0. So we have 0 minus uh, y1 is 6. Okay. Over uh, x2. x2 is 6. Okay. So 6 minus then x1 is 0. Okay. So we are going to have uh, 0 minus 6 is negative 6 over 6 minus 0 is 6 and this gives the gradient to be negative 1. Alright, now that we found the gradient to be negative 1. Alright, now we have m which is the gradient being equal to negative 1. Now you need also to pay attention to the point, this point here. The point at which uh, this graph, um, this line is crossing the uh, y axis. So this point here is called C. So we are going to say uh, C, which is the y intercept, the point at which the graph is crossing, at uh, the point at which the line is crossing the y uh, axis is 6 here. Okay? So now, now that we know this, you are going to say, we are going to use the formula y is equal to mx plus c. Okay? So the m, the m here is the gradient. The gradient, you found that the gradient is negative 1. So you are going to have negative 1. Uh, x, so Negative 1 times x would just be negative 1x plus c is 6. Okay, so you have y is equal to 1 times x is negative x plus 6. Alright, so meaning uh, this line here has the equation y is equal to uh, negative x plus 6. Alright, now this is just the equation. Now, what would be the inequality for this equation? What is the inequality of this equation? Alright, so you ask yourself, how is the nature of the line? Is it a full line or a dotted line? So when you look at this line, it's a full line. So meaning our inequality will either have this or that. Alright. Uh, so the other question you're supposed to ask yourself, which one is the shaded region or the unwanted region? The unwanted region is this one, the greater part. Okay, so since the unwanted region is the greater part, meaning the wanted region, the region at which R is, is the less part. So meaning uh, we are going to have Y is less because it's a solid line. You are, going, you are going to have less or equal to negative x plus 6. Alright, so this is the inequality that they required. So using the same method, we are going to find the equation of this line. So that we use it to come up with the inequality. So let's call this equation as b. Okay, as usual, the first step is to collect the points the points the obvious points that where the points where this line is crossing so this line is crossing here at 0 comma 0 so we have 0 comma 0 and also it's crossing here 2 comma 4 2 comma 4 so the next step is to find the gradient m so m is given by y2 minus y1 over uh, x2 minus x1 all right again let's make this point to be point one so meaning we have x1 then y1 x2 then y2 so let's substitute in this so we're going to have uh, y2 is 4 so we have 4 minus y1 is 0 then over x2 x2 is 2 minus uh, x1 x1 is 0 okay so we are having 
4 over 2 giving um, 2. So the gradient m is equal to 2. Now what about the y-intercept? Uh, what about the point where this graph is crossing the y uh, graph? So you can see that this line is crossing the this y uh, graph here on the origin. So which means that c is equal to uh, 0. So again we are going to use the formula y is equal to mx plus c. All right? So y is equal to m is, is 2. 2 times x is x. So we have 2x plus 0. c is 0. Then you finally have y is equal to 2x. This 0 is dropped out. Okay, so meaning this line here, this line here has the equation y is equal to 2x. Now, what about the inequality? Okay, first of all, ask yourself, is, it, is this line a dotted line or a full line? So when you look at this line, this line is the, the dotted line. So meaning uh, our inequality will have one of these. Okay, what about the greater part? Okay, so let me just show you something. If you have the x or y plane like this, x and y, this is zero. The values of x, or the values of y increase as you go up, okay? And the values of x increase as you go to the right. All right. So now, um, okay. So now, um, if you have a line that is moving like this okay it means this is the greater part okay this side is the greater part because this line is increasing like this okay is increasing and if this part is shaded like this it means this is the greater part all right and the down part here is the less part all right with this information uh, with this information let's go ahead and decide uh, the inequality for this so this is the greater part okay uh, sorry all right so this is the less part okay according to the to the uh, y-axis. The y-axis increases as you go up. So the part that is shaded in terms of the y-axis, this is the greater part. The unwanted region is the greater part. But R is on the less part. So meaning uh, here you are going to have y is less than less than because this number one, this is it the dotted line and also uh, R is on the less part so R so y is less than 2x all right so the the inequalities that define uh, the region R are these that we found here okay Where's the other one? The other one is here. All right. So remember to write these, your answers, in the space uh, provided here. Okay. So we have y greater or equal to 1. Then y less than 2x. Okay. This one here. Then y is less or equal to negative. Y is less or equal to negative x plus 6. All right. All right. Question 22. But A says integrate uh, this function with respect to x. Okay. So um, 
one thing that you have to know is that if for example they tell you to integrate a function ax uh, to the power n with respect to x which means dx uh, this means that uh, you are going to add a 1 to the power which is n so you have n plus 1 then divide by the new power which is n plus 1 so meaning you are going to have uh, a x to the power n plus 1 then over the new power which is n plus 1 and because this is an indefinite integral it has no limits you are going to add a constant c plus c so integration means uh, you just add a, a, a 1 to the power and then divide by the new power okay so we are going to use this principle here when integrating this okay so let's just rewrite this as uh, the, inter the integral of uh, 3x squared minus 5x plus 9 over x cubed then dx because we are integrating with respect to x okay so now before we apply this we need to change this fraction here so this is same as the integral of uh, 3x squared minus 5x then this one is same as plus 9 times uh, 1 over x cubed okay now by the laws of indices if you have a, a number that has been written as 1 over a a being the base this is same as it, um, a which is the base to the power negative 1 so we are going to write uh, this this like this so in our case here we have 1 over x cubed so we need to re rewrite this in this form so we're going to have uh, the base x to the power uh, negative 3 okay so meaning here we are going to replace x to the power negative 3 all right so we are going to have the integral of 3x squared minus 5x uh, plus uh, 9 times x to the power negative 3. Oh, here there is dx. Okay, we are integrating with respect to x. So with respect to x, dx like this. All right, so now we can apply uh this okay so let's apply that so to every every power we're going to add a one and then divide by the new power so we're going to have three x squared plus one over two plus one then minus five x to the power one plus one because five x is same this x is same as is, is being raised to the power 1. Okay, then over 1 plus 1. Then plus, uh, this is 9. Uh, so we're going 9 times x to the power negative 3 is just 9. x to the power negative 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1 then plus c all right hope that's clear hope that's clear then we just have to simplify this so we are going to have uh, 3x to the power 2 plus 1 is 3 then over the new power which is 3 then minus uh, 5 then x to the power 1 plus 1 is x squared or we have a 2 then over the new power then 
plus um, 9 x negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 okay over uh, the new power which is uh, negative 2 then plus c okay uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to simplify further this three and this three will cancel what we are going to have to remain with is x to the power three minus uh, this is going to be five uh, x squared over two then here um, you have a negative number negative nine x to the power negative two divided by a negative number which is negative two so meaning you are going to have a negative here okay um, then 9x to the power negative 2 over 2 plus c all right so now we need to change this also back to a fraction form by applying uh, this okay let's just change that so that we have the final answer so we are going to have uh, x to the power 3 minus 5 x squared over 2 then uh, minus so this is same as 1 over x squared 1 over x squared times 2 so we are going to have 9 okay 9 over 2x squared plus c. All right. Then this is the answer. All right. So part B says the diagram shows the graph of the function y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. The curve cuts the x-axis at A and B and the y-axis at C. So this curve is cutting uh, the x-axis at a and b and the y-axis at c okay now the question says find the coordinates of b and c so they want you to find the coordinates of uh, b and c now how do you find the coordinates of uh, b and c first of all let's find the coordinates of uh, b now, how do you find the coordinates of B? Uh, what you have to know is that along this line, the value of Y is equal to zero. Okay? This is what you have to know. So, meaning for us to find the coordinates of B, we are going to use this equation. Okay? We are going to use this equation. And where there is Y, we are going to put zero because B is lying along this line. Uh, where y is equal to 0. So we are going to have uh, y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. Then because y here along this line is 0, so we are going to equate this uh, equation to 0. So we are going to have uh, x squared plus 2x minus 15. Where there is y here, we're going to say is equal to zero. All right. So at this stage, uh, there are actually many ways you can use to solve this quadratic equation. But in this video, we'll use uh, the factor method. So the factor method, first of all, you need to find the product, the sum, and the factors. Okay? You need to find these. So the product is found by multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. So the coefficient of x squared here is, is 1 times negative 15. So the answer will be negative 15 for the product. Then the sum, the sum you get the coefficient of x here. So which is a 2. Factors, you are looking for factors of negative 15. Two of them such that when you add them, you get positive 2 and when you sub when you multiply them you get uh, negative 15 
and those factors let's see if we say three and five okay three times five we are not getting uh negative 15 but we are getting positive 15. now what if we add a negative here negative 15 i mean negative 3 times 5 will be negative 15. what if we add negative 3 plus 5 are we getting a 2 yes we are getting a 2. so uh, these are the factors so what we are going to do is we'll have x squared then minus 3 this one here then you just add an x here then plus 5 this 5 is this one just again add an x minus 15 this 15 here is equal to 0 so now what you are going to do is you are going to factorize the first two terms and the sec second two terms so what is common here is the x okay x squared divided by x is x then negative 3x divided by x is e minus 3 then plus what is common between these two terms is a 5. Okay, then 5x divided by 5 is x. Then negative 15 divided by uh, 5 is negative 3. Then is equal to 0. Alright. Now, you can see that what, it, what is in the brackets is the same. So, since they are the same, you are going to pick one. One of them. Okay. Then, and then... And then you pick these that are outside x plus 5 then is equal to 0 all right when you have this is same as x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0 all right to find the value of x add the 3 here and what you've done on the left of this equation you also do it on the right of this equation so same here we are going to subtract a 5 we are using additive inverse to eliminate this term so what you've done on the left you also do it on the on the right okay so x this becomes a 0 then is equal to 0 plus 3 is 3 or x is equal to uh, this becomes a 0 then 0 minus 5 is negative 5. All right. So, which means that here at A, we can have the coordinates here. Um, even here, we can have the coordinates. Okay. Uh, so, when you look at these answers, the two answers, which one is negative? Of course, A is negative the x the x coordinate at a is negative so negative 5 is here because this is zero the origin and then this is the negative part on the left so remember along this line y is zero so you have zero here so now which means that the positive one is for b okay so three here and then zero all right so but in the question they haven't asked us to find the coordinates of who? a so meaning this is this is out okay meaning this is out so we are only interested in this so b coordinates are 3 comma 0 okay all right what about c coordinates here c coordinates again what you have to know is that along this line the value of x is 0 okay so meaning we are going to use this equation okay y is equal to uh, x squared plus 2x minus 15 to find to also find the coordinates of of uh, c but remember along this line the value of x is 0. So meaning everywhere where there is x in here, we are going to replace a 0. So we are going to have y is equal to uh, 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 15. 
Okay, so the whole of this thing here is a zero. Zero minus 15 is uh, minus 15. Okay, so so which means that the coordinates here, uh, remember, x is zero. So you have zero comma negative 15, negative 15. So these are the coordinates of B and C. The coordinates of B and C. The last part of this question, they want us to find the minimum value of Y. Okay? They want us to find the minimum value of Y. So the minimum value of Y is given by Y is equal to 4AC minus B squared over 4a so please you need to keep this formula it's very useful okay so this is the formula for finding the minimum value of y okay and also we need to make use of this equation here we need to make use of this equation here so the equation which is this one here y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay, let's just clean up here so that our work looks neat. Okay, let's just clean up here, clean up like this. All right, so this equation is very useful. Okay, so you can see that we've used this same given equation to find all the values, all the to answer all the questions that we were asked. So now we need to locate or to identify what A, B, and C are. So A is usually the coefficient of x squared. So in this case here we have an invisible one. So A is one. Then B is the coefficient of uh, the x. So in this case we have a two. Then C is the constant, in this case, negative 15. So all we need to do is just to replace this in here. Okay, so we're going to have 4 uh, times A is 1 times 1 times uh, C. C is negative, uh, negative 15. Then minus B. B is what? B is, is a 2 and it's being squared. Then all over 4 times then all over 4 times 1. A is 1 here. Okay? So you are going to simplify here. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 15 is negative 60. Then minus uh, 2 squared is 4. Okay? Over 4 times 1 is 4. So negative 60 minus 4 is negative 64. Over 4. So negative 64 divided by 4 is negative 16. So this is the max, the minimum value. Okay? So this is the minimum value. All right, number 23. The following diagram is a speed time graph of a car. The car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly at 3 meters per second squared for 4 seconds until it reaches a speed of V meters per second. It then travels at this constant speed for 80 seconds. It finally comes to the to, to, to rest after t seconds. Okay, so they are saying the car started from rest. So here rest means from zero and accelerated for accelerated at three meters per second squared in four uh, four seconds 
find the value of v find the value of v so we want to find the value of v so we want to find the value of v which is the final velocity okay so we can write the data so data first which is going to help us so u which is the initial velocity is zero then v which is the final velocity is the one that we are looking for time time is actually uh four seconds four seconds okay now at a they want us to find the value of v so how are we going to find the value of v we are going to find the value of v by using the formula for finding acceleration okay uh we've been given that acceleration in this case is uh three meters per second squared so three meters per second squared is the acceleration so for us to find the value of v we are going to use the formula for finding the acceleration which is acceleration is equal to v which is the final velocity minus u which is the initial velocity over uh, time taken okay so we have been given acceleration which is three meters per second so where there's a we're going to put three is equal to the final velocity v is the one that we are looking for so we have v minus the initial velocity is z, uh, zero so we're going to put zero then divided by time time is four seconds so we're going to put four here all right so we're going to have three is equal to v, v minus zero is just v over four okay so we can cross multiply here and then we are going to have one times v is v is equal to three times four is 12 meters per second so the value of v is 12 meters per second so you can even write it down here and say v is equal to 12 meters per second all right uh, part b they want you to find the average speed for the first t 12 seconds the average speed for the first 12 seconds so they are talking about you finding the average speed when the car was moving from from here to there up to here in 12 seconds here okay so they want you to find the average speed when the car was moving uh, here under this graph the one that i've highlighted all right so since they want us to find the average speed so speed remember from physics speed is given by uh, distance distance divided by time okay now in our case we've been given time as 12 seconds here in the first 12 seconds then do we have distance we don't know the distance we don't have the distance d okay now how do you find the distance how do you find the distance so distance first of all there are actually many ways you can find the distance the total distance that the car covered in the first 12 seconds so but in this case i'm, I'm going to show you one method uh, of just looking at this shape when you look at this shape this is a trapezium so for you to find the distance you're going to use the formula for finding the area of the trapezium the area of the trapezium is equal to the distance okay so distance is equal to the area of a trapezium is half uh, a plus b times the height okay so this is always a the distance from here up to there is a then the distance from here up to there is b then the height this is the height in this case the height here we found that v is 12 so the height is 12 here okay so what you are going to 
due now is just to substitute. So you have 1 over 2. Then A is the distance from here up to there. So for you to find this distance here, you're going to say 12 minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay, so you have 8 plus B. B is the total distance from here to there. Okay, so in this case we have 12. Okay, the height, the height is 12 also. So 12. Okay, so we are going to have um, all right, so here you can even cross cancel 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 12 is 6. All right, so you are going to have uh, 8 plus 8 plus uh, 12 is 20, then 20 times 6, okay, 20 times 6, 20 times 6 giving 120, so you have 120 meters, so the total distance here is 120, okay, 120 meters, now we are going to use this distance here to find the speed, so we are going to have Distance is 120 uh, meters divided by time. Time is 12. 12 seconds. Okay. So 12 seconds. All right. So. Twelve into 12. So 12 into 12. 1. 12 into 12. 1, 12 into 0 is just 0. So meaning then you have meters divided by seconds. So which is meters per second. So you have 10 meters, 10 meters per second. So this is the speed at which this car uh, traveled at in the first 12 seconds. So the speed is... Um, 10 meters per second. All right, but C says uh, find the value of T here. The T is here. Find the value of T if the speed at T is equal to 14 is 4 meters per second. So they want us to find the value of T uh, if the speed at t at when the time is 14 so meaning 14 is somewhere somewhere here so 14 when the time is 14 uh, they are saying the speed is uh, the speed here is uh, 4 meters per second all right so how do we uh, answer such a question okay so remember here the final velocity here we found that it's 12 okay 12 meters per second all right so we can see that when the car was moving from zero to this point the initial velocity u was zero and the final velocity we found that v is 12 okay so meaning when the car will be going in the other direction the opposite direction like this at as the car will be decelerating, uh, this now becomes the initial velocity, 12. This value now becomes the initial velocity. Okay? So, for us to find the value of T, first of all, we need to find the deceleration. Okay? The deceleration along this line. Okay? So, you can see that since the, the line is like this, straight like this, uh, dropping like this, it means that the deceleration or the acceleration here is constant. So first of all, we need to find the acceleration here. Okay, so how are we going to find the acceleration? So we have u here. Then we are going to take this as the final velocity. 
V here will be 4 meters per second. Okay? Meters per second. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to say, first of all, let's find the acceleration. So acceleration is given by uh, the final velocity V minus U over time. All right. So we're going to have acceleration is equal to the final velocity in this case is this one here, the 4 meters per second. So 4 minus the initial velocity is this, the 12 meters. Okay. And over. So we are going to subtract. We are going to find the, di the difference here. We are going to say 14 minus 12 to find the difference in time here. Since we are moving from here. Uh, yeah. Up to here. So we are going to find the difference in time. 14 minus 2, uh, 14 minus 12 is 2. So I'll just write it as 14 minus C, uh, 12. Okay. So we're going to have 4 minus 12 is negative 8. Then 14 minus 12 is 2, positive 12, positive 2. Then negative 8 divided by 2 is negative uh, 4 meters the second squared. So the acceleration is negative because it's a deceleration. It's a deceleration. Okay. So meaning along this line, this is the acceleration, negative four meters per second. All right. So now we are going to take this. This will remain as you. So we use. So we are going to use this point and this point to find the value of t so you can uh, you can give this point a name let's say this is point a and then this is point b okay all right so here u is 12 and then here we have t the time so if if this is the initial velocity then when you hit the x-axis here, along the x-axis, the final velocity v is 0. Okay? The final velocity v will be 0, is 0 along this. You can see that this is 0, so along this line the, whole, the value is 0. Okay? So now for us to find um, the value of t, uh, we are going to use the formula for finding the acceleration as well. Okay? We are going to use the formula for finding the acceleration and then solve for t. Okay? So we are going to say acceleration is equal to uh, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Okay? Acceleration, because we have already found the acceleration along this line, which is negative 4 meters per second. So we'll write negative 4 is equal to the final velocity is here, which is a 0 minus u, the initial velocity is 12. Okay? Divided by time. We don't know the time. It's the one that we are looking for. So we just write it, uh, time. Okay, so we cross multiply. Then we'll have negative 4 times t, which will be negative 4t is equal to 1 times negative 12, because 0 minus 12 is negative 12. So 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. So to solve for t, you divide by negative 4 on both sides. Okay? So these negative 4 will cancel, then you have t is equal to uh, negative, negative, will cancel, be positive, then 12 divided by 4 is 3. Alright, so here the time is, is 3. We found that the time is, is 3. So meaning from the initial time 12 here, for us to reach here, we are going to add a 3 uh, seconds. So, time, you are going to say, therefore, 
time uh, t is equal to uh, this is 12 the initial one is 12 so 12 plus 3 which is equal to uh, 15 seconds meaning here at t you have 15 seconds okay all right uh, thank you very much for watching if you are new to this channel consider subscribing hit the like button and share